What's up, everybody? I'm Allison. And I'm Jill. And this is Fly is One, the YouTube series where we talk to on the U.S. national team. Today's guest is USA national team goalkeeper and sourdough connoisseur Jenny Rizzo. She moved to Pennsylvania in fifth grade and grew up in Hershey, Pennsylvania, where she attended high school and then played for Alley Cats. She went on to play college at Penn State and then played professionally overseas at Beeston Hockey Club in 2019. For Team USA, she played in the 2016 Junior Pan American Games, earning a silver in the tournament. Her first senior cap came against Canada on November 27, 2021. She competed in the 2023 and 2024 seasons for the FIH Pro League, and she was on the team that qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympics. Please welcome Jenny Rizzo. So for today's episode of, as a Fly as One, we have United States Women National Team member and goalkeeper Jenny Rizzo. So thank you with us today, Jenny, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks you guys for having me. All right. So our first question, we have to ask this. Um, So on Instagram, this entire weekend, all we've seen is pictures of sourdough. Yeah. What is happening? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I just got into making bread um, a couple months ago, and uh, it's kind of like a coping mechanism to all of the stress that, you know, field hockey brings. It's uh a good way to make carbohydrates that fuel my uh, training. So um, I've been playing around with bread. I'm starting to get some teammates into it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with it at the moment. But if you've never tried it, I highly, highly recommend getting into it. It's like nothing better than making your own bread and then eating all of the bread um, and then making some more, you know. Do you have any um, secrets to the perfect sourdough? Oh man, um, it's all about trial and error. Uh, we had Saturday, I had uh, six teammates um, came over and we actually did a bread making course. So uh, I taught them how to do all the steps of the, of the sourdough making. Um, and yeah, it's all about just trial and error. If your loaf doesn't look right, it probably still tastes good. So go for it. Uh, but yeah, it's just a really fun process. Was that just like hours of watching like YouTube videos or like TikToks? Like how yeah, did you find the, the best recipe to try? Yeah, for I mean, you? people do some like wacky things. Like, <laughs> yeah, some of these YouTubers and like TikTokers are like stand in your kitchen and like spin 700 times and then put your bread on your counter at like a 45 degree angle. And like some people <laughs> just do some like weird things. Um, But yeah, just a lot of like self-education and watching the the influencers teach me how to do it myself um which I've thought about becoming one of those influencers for bread making but I'm gonna stick to to field hockey I think it's uh <laughs> a little bit easier Alrighty, so let's jump into the actual questions we kind of have this split into sections um so these are all the goalkeeping specific questions the first one comes from Ava, who plays for Philly Hockey Club, and she asked, when did you start playing um, and why? Cool. Uh, yeah, so I started playing field hockey um, when I moved to Pennsylvania when I was in middle school. Um, I was actually a right midfielder for four or five years before I was thrown in the goal. Um, and I started playing because all my friends did it. That's what we all do, right? Um, and then when I was in high school, we needed a goalkeeper for my varsity team. Um, and I was a catcher in softball and I played soccer. So my coach was like, hey, you should go in the goal. Um, and I feel like that's how we all end up in the goal. Um, so maybe Ava has the same story. But uh, the reason I stuck with it was because when I was a field player, it was really fun, like, I always thought there's nothing better than like scoring a goal or assisting a goal or anything like that. But then I started saving goals and I was like, okay, this actually is like, I think this is better. Like I just am breaking hearts out here. So uh, <laughs> that's why I kept with it. But um, yeah, so it's kind of how I got into it. It kind of chose me. Nice. So um, how does your training differ, differ from the field players, whether it be in the weight room or on the field training? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, I don't have to run nearly as far or as long as the field players, which I'm thankful for. Um, so training for us, um, a lot of times is just like small, small space. We call it goalie world, but um, we'll have a goalkeeping coach usually with us. Um, and it's me, Kelsey Robles and Kelsey Bang, and, and we have a pretty fun time uh, just, you know, saving balls, working on some technical stuff as well. Um, 
And then when we're doing conditioning or lifting, a lot of what we focus on is just more explosivity. So a lot of what we do is in within like a 15 yard radius um, or it's really short bursts of sprints. Um, and then we're trying to repeat that to create endurance within that like maximal effort. Um, and then in the weight room, yeah, I don't like when people can uh, outlift me. So we're pretty competitive in there as goalkeepers <laughs> as well. Um, but same thing, it's just, it's much more explosive and less less about endurance. Do you have a favorite lift? Ooh, favorite lift. Um, I love a good bench press, you know, makes you feel like you're like the Hulk or something um, or deadlift. Yeah, I, picking things up and putting it down is usually my bread and butter. Molly from Green Mountain Girls asks how you deal with mental blocks as a goalkeeper. Yeah, um, the the position of goalkeeper, I think, is like 75 percent mental, 25 percent physical. And I wish I would have known that at an earlier age. Um, I think a lot of times, yeah, you you get in your head or you, or you allow the game to kind of spiral and you're not like in that focus flow state anymore. And I think there's a lot of different ways you can cope with that. Um, I think for me specifically, I usually try to do attention anchors, which is um, for those who aren't familiar with um, an attention anchor, it's something that kind of keeps your focus in the game or in the moment, whatever you're doing. So for me, before I start a training session or a game, um, I'll choose something that's in my my visual view um, and that will be my anchor. So it might be like someone holding up a flag in the crowd or um, a, a like little dot on a speck of um, some sort of like uh, sign that's on the side of the field. Um, and when I feel myself sort of slipping, like I'm getting frustrated, I've let a goal in, um, maybe my defenders aren't listening to me super well, I kind of will take my eyes, put it on there. Um, feel my feet on the ground kind of sink into it and that kind of brings me back to whatever was derailing me brings me back to where I was in the present nice um Peyton who plays for Fair Fairfield U and also a long strength athlete asked how do you like the plus leg guards yeah um I love them I did not love them at first um that was another thing that kind of shows me I broke my my uh, I had just like the normal robo leg guards the split color um and for me those would always break I'm also really hard on equipment um so this probably isn't for everyone but it would always break right at the steam where the two colors would meet um and that would be after like a year or less of use and so it happened one time when we were in a pretty heavy training period down here in Charlotte um and all I had were the plus leg guards that Longstreth had sent me um they're super about just letting me try new things and um I put those on and I was wearing them for like a week or two and um, they reached out and they're like, Hey, we got to replace the ones that broke. Like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, honestly, I think I want the plus ones. Um, I think they're harder to maneuver on the ground with, but just that extra like inch or so on the side, I think it gives you, yeah, just like so much um, extra touch on the ball and just like extra assurance that like you can make that save. Um, and you kind of get used to some of the ground movements then. Um, once you're in them for a little bit, I think that's why I was kind of resistant to switching. I totally did not have to Google that there are different types of leg guards when she asked that. Oh, question. come on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't play goalie. Um, that's fair. My, like my best friend and my college roommate were goalies, so they probably would want to kill me for that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I have teammates who are like, why are your leg guards just one color and Kelsey Bing's are two colors? And this is like, guys, like they're completely different sizes. and <laughs> It's painful, but the life of the goalie. All right. Uh, next question is, do you have anything that you're specifically working on or want to adjust like in your playing? Yeah. Um, right now I'm some of my focuses are in shootouts, just being more, um, having more variety in my shootout so I know like it probably sounds weird because you're like you're a goalkeeper you don't actually have the ball I don't know if anyone told you that but um we're as scoutable as the field players are so just like being able to um change how I approach the ball or how I'm manipulating the forward um is something that I'm working on at the moment um and then also just like drag flicks uh it's not as common in 
high school college in the U.S., but it's huge internationally. Um, I think it's super fun. Um, I hope they don't get rid of it. I know it's on the chopping block, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just working on some of my deliberate movements in, in the, the drag flick of which piece of equipment am I going with? How am I putting myself in a good position for second phase shots? Um, those sort of things. Do you have a favorite drag flicker to have practice on you? Yeah, on the U.S. team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Beth Yeager, she um, has been <laughs> flicking probably since she was out of the womb. But uh, yeah, she's <laughs> really improved over the past year or two. Um, and she's just fun, too, because you can like kind of get in her head a little bit, like start smack talking her. Uh, and it, it does kind of relate to um, gameplay as well. If you put a, like a coffee on the line, um, puts a little pressure. So I really like training with her. Yeah, I'm um, a little noted for constantly um, tweeting that she should be taking the drag flicks to the point that Dan Strange, uh, who's one of the like biggest commentators for F uh, for the FIH, will be like, yeah, the Twitter people really want her to take one. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I am Twitter people. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> from different a, accounts, just like, hey, listen here. <laughs> we are a pro Beth Yeager drag flick uh, podcast here. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm in support of it, so... <laughs> That wasn't scripted, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, how does your approach change from like in like approaching an international game compared to when you approached a game in college? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I didn't really have a pregame routine in college. I know that probably sounds wild because kids these days, I feel like are way more progressed than maybe I was. And that was only like five years ago that I was in college. But um <laughs> Now I have like a proper pregame routine that kind of sets me up for the game. And obviously every game's different. What you're going to face in the game is going to be different, but um, we have a really awesome sports psychologist with the U S team right now, Joanne Perry. Um, and she's helped us individually just create like, Hey, what works best for you to get you prepared for a game. So my routine looks like depending on what time the game is um, just doing mindfulness. So I kind of just like sit somewhere quiet um, preferably outside, eyes closed, and I'm just doing some visualization of what I'll see in the game, how I'll feel, um, observing the crowd, that sort of thing. And then leading up to game time, I have pre-workout, um, get the jitters going, and then uh, typically in the locker room, I'll uh, find people who are similar energy levels, me, like Brooke DeBerdine, um, Ashley Sessa, uh, just high energy people, and usually we'll dance around, throw a tennis ball, um, and then my, my warm up routine is usually the same as well. But in college, I kind of was like, oh, it's game day. Like, um, I thought I ate like relatively healthy leading up to a game, but I didn't actually do any sort of visualization. Um, or like, I, I kind of thought it was, it was like a weird, like voodoo thing. If you had like the same things you did leading up to a game. Cause I had teammates who were like, I have to wear my socks, even though they're crusty and dirty from two days ago. It's like, <laughs> I don't feel the need to do that, but there is a benefit to doing uh, specific things that kind of help you mentally, I think, enter the game. Yeah, it's always the freaking socks. Yeah. Like, it's always socks, and I don't get it. Yeah, especially when they're dirty. It's like, you don't have to do that. Like, <laughs> please don't. Like, can, we pick, for your health. can we pick, like, a headband or maybe, like, a bracelet, like, a hair tie or something? Why do we yeah. have the socks? I, I do have a sweatband that I have to wear for game days. Um, it's got an American flag on it, but... I usually can like rinse it in the sink with uh, like face wash and it, it cleans in, in 24 hours. So. Alrighty. So we only have one question about the qualifiers because I feel like we're kind of beating it dead at this point with, um, That's fair. you know, the 18 million people we're going to have on this show. Um, so you got the start in the finals against Germany after you guys had already qualified for the Olympics um, and you were preparing for this pro league series and, you know, you're, probably halfway through your 50 day stint in India so going into that match what was kind of like the team mindset was it just like okay let's play this game and look forward to the pro league or it was like we're gonna get this gold like what was kind of the mindset going into the game yeah um obviously that game was tough because we were playing the best seated uh team at the qualifier and you're right we our pressure of that qualification kind of had already passed um so there was some nervous energy around like, are we going to be able to show up for this game? Um, or are we going to be kind of complacent in this approach? Um, 
So something that we did was we, we really just approached it the same way we did the previous games, um, especially me, Kelsey Bing, just like in our approach for scouting, that's something that I really value and I feel really prepared when I have proper scout done. Um, so we approached it the same way in that sense. And um, some of our tactics were just a little bit uh, more like challenging, I'd say, than maybe the qualifier because the pressure to win the game wasn't there. Um, but it still was a huge, huge opportunity for us to grow. Um, and so that game was really just about, hey, this is our first step towards Paris, right? Like Germany is going to be in Paris. We're going to be in Paris. We need to treat this like, hey, this is this is an Olympic match. Um, and I actually think we handled it pretty well. I was pretty excited to get the start. Um, and yeah, just be able to grow with the team, um, and kind of experience that crowd with them, uh, in that moment. I think we probably could have put out a better game. Um, like I, I think we kind of hung on with them and we played some good defense, but I think we could have had better opportunities, uh, to go forward and attack. But overall, like, I, I think we definitely, um, we weren't complacent, which I think we were worried about. So I was pretty, pretty proud of us for that. Okay, so the next group of questions is about scouting and analytics. Um, cool. Because unbeknownst to us until like a week ago, we're, we're, we were uh, co-workers. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm going to have to nail Chris on that one this week. No, seriously. I, we do like a Zoom, Zoom cocktail hour. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you walk us through kind of what goes through your head during you could do either a stroke or a shootout, like figuring out where the player is going to go and like what you're going to do. Yeah. So most of that, like um, most of my mindset when I'm in an actual shooter stroke, I've done all of the preparation um, before I've even stepped on the field for that game. So um, we are very lucky to have probably the best uh, video analysis guy in Chris Fry uh, working with our team and just the the amount of work he does to just get us literally whatever we need coded um, with a ribbon on top is super so um, I try to utilize that as much as I can um, so going into strokes or shootouts I will always have a plan for whoever I'm facing um, just knowing where they tend to go where they like to go recognizing maybe where my weaknesses are and where they might try to exploit that um and so that way when I'm actually in the game I'm not thinking oh like I don't I wonder if Allison's going to go to the left or right today like I I know where she likes to go and I know I've had I have set myself up with a plan of like how can I get in her head and maybe try to manipulate her a little bit what is your ideal playing format like four backs three backs wh like what do you like yeah um well, as a goalkeeper, I don't really attack very much. So I like as many defenders um, close to the middle of the field as possible for counter control. Um, so I prefer when we play four in the back um, and when we like push the the right or left halves to attack forward. Um, I think it just makes me feel more secure in that if we turn the ball over, I've got some defenders that can hopefully slow things down before it gets to me. Um, but I, I think there's been some really cool stuff just in the international world um come up over the past two or three years of like different formations of like where you're sitting the links um especially in like outlet and how you're pushing your side backs to you know exploit the line of the the pressing forwards um it, it's been really cool just to see it evolve um and how our team has also started to utilize some of these things and and see what works for us based on our skill set okay and then the last scouting analytics question is when you're watching an, op an opponent what are like the first few things that you clock about them do you look at like pressing style or like speed like what do you kind of look at first yeah well I think a team overall I think how a team presses and outlets are like some really key components of um, even what their playing style might look like um, so if they've got an aggressive press you've got to think about you know, why are they pressing aggressively? They probably have speed and ability to, to have a good counterattack. Um, I think for myself as a goalkeeper, um, I look a lot at their pressing structures and also um, their like circle entries and attack 25 type entries. So who are those key players that like this team's trying to get the ball to who isn't afraid to take a 1v1 and kind of make something for themselves? 
Um, and then of course, penalty corner defense, um, just looking at who are their main threats on the top of the circle, uh, who's maybe winning the penalty corners and, and who do we need to be aware of? Like, okay, this girl doesn't, maybe doesn't trust herself in shooting, but she can find a foot on a dime. So I think those things are just really helpful. Um, mainly because I feel like I have an eye for it from the position that I'm in and just the experience that I have with scouting. Um, and it, it can just help our defenders as well of like, Hey, watch out for X, Y, and Z. Um, or, you know, Maria Granado coming in, like you got to give her a stick and a step and then some because she'll slice and dice. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to talk about, um, when you, played overseas so in 2020 you played overseas for the Beeston Hockey Club how much do you think by doing that um, impacted your career and helped your development as a goalkeeper yeah um, I mean I think most of my coaches would say that my playing overseas is the only reason I'm probably still playing um, and I would agree with that um, I did trial for the senior team when I was coming out of college and I didn't make the team so my only choice was really either go overseas or kind of like move on. Um, so I think just the, to speak on my time there, I think just like the amount of hockey that you play um, and the culture around the sport, there's just so much pressure uh, when you're in the NCAA to perform, to get wins, to, you know, you're just like in it. Right. And then to go over there and kind of experience the culture of like, yes, they want to win, but you're playing from September all the way to May. Um, and it's a very long season. And then you've got indoor kind of slapped in the middle. There's just like a little bit less pressure on each game and more um, encouragement for development. And just, uh, I don't know, just like support, especially being in a club like that. It's you're not the only team. So it's like, how are men doing? How are our junior players doing? Um, we want to succeed as a, as a club rather than just that one individual team. So it was, it was a really cool experience. Um, it really helped me kind of take some pressure off myself and focus on, Hey, I'm going to get worse to get better. Um, and inevitably I think it's why I'm still playing today. Um, and then kind of going off that, um, your USA field hockey profile says that you were involved in the Beeston Flyers hockey. Can you kind yeah. of talk a little bit more about that experience? Yeah, that was one of my favorite things that I did um, over at Beeston. So um, the one of the sons of the founders of the Beeston Hockey Club actually, or sorry, his grandson, um, created this programming. It's similar to the All-Stars that we have over here in America. Um, but we basically just on Wednesday nights every week would have um, special needs and handicapped players um, under the age, I think, of 30 maybe. Uh, they were allowed to come and just come play ho hockey with us. So um, some were in like wheelchairs, some um, just had maybe some developmental delays. And yeah, we just had so much fun just teaching them the sport, allowing them to kind of express themselves through it. Uh, and then we usually would scrimmage towards the end, which ended up just, it was so fun. Um, yeah, there were guys who score a goal and they're like, messy like ripping their shirt off and we're like guys like <laughs> don't need to do that but um it's something that I'm really glad that I was a part of um and would love to start something like that here in Charlotte um I think it was a little, little bit easier over there just because hockey's more well known I think it wasn't that weird for um people to come and play uh, regardless of their ability but uh I would love to expose the Charlotte community and especially those who maybe don't have access to sport as much uh, to be able to play yeah, I feel like up here, or because I'm from New Jersey, so it's mm -hmm. like a little bit more popular, like All-Stars is gaining a little bit more traction up here since it's more densely populated. But um, my mom actually founded um, a cheerleading and football team for kids with disabilities oh, cool. um, in my hometown. So it's something like very close to me. Um, and it's always been something very close to me. Um, and I think that like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, like we want to grow the game. We want to grow the game. And when we talk about growing the game, we always talk about it for girls. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, your stereotypical normal girls. And like, that's also like, I feel like that should be part of the conversation, like kind of expanding it more to everybody. um, Because then you get more people like learning about the sport in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, No, I would agree with that. I think like a lot of like when I think of grow the game, of course, like I'm selfishly thinking, how can we make our national team better from the grassroots level? But Part of it, yeah, is just get, exposing our sport to more people and 
I think about the joy I get from playing. I'm sure you guys have it too, but just like allowing others to experience that. Um, it's really cool. And just like experience it with them. It's yeah. It's like nothing else, you know? All righty. So we'll switch into the fun questions as if those weren't fun questions to answer. <laughs> um, so you live in Pennsylvania. We have to ask Wawa or Sheets and what's your order? Mm. Oh, well, we're actually getting a Wawa in Hershey. Um, so I'm a Wawa girl for sure. Um, I'm trying to think. I haven't been to Wawa in a while, though. I do love just their hot coffee. I'm like a gas station coffee through and through. Um, but yeah, just a hot coffee and like a bagel sandwich is great. <laughs> I feel like we're getting some good orders out of this. Yeah. Like it's not the same one each time. I love the variety. What, what was Maddie Zimmer's? Do I want to know? I know Sessa's. Sessa's was a Boston cream bagel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or a Boston cream donut and a meatball sub. And then, yeah, Zimmer's was definitely a smoothie with yogurt. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I get. I think she maybe showed me that. Yeah, potentially. But Um, Would you rather face a shootout or would you rather face a stroke? Oh, shootout for sure. Yeah, stroke you got no chance in my opinion um shoot out you can at least give it your best shot and cause a stroke right like maybe don't recommend it but (laughs) (laughs) all right so you are going to be the new assistant coach slash goalkeeping coach at Maryland and Chris told me that I should ask you your opinion on Old Bay on Old Bay yeah (laughs) so random um I don't know if I have an opinion on old bay I've had it before but um I don't think I've been in Maryland long enough to to feel like I would die for it you know but maybe I'll get there so you're a PSU alum so we have to ask what is your favorite ice cream flavor from the Berkey Creamery oh yeah um death by chocolate is for sure my favorite uh and I'm not even like that big of a chocolate person but they just do it so well that you can't not get death by chocolate I guess going off the PSU thing do you have like um obviously a lot of big like football games and stuff do you have like a favorite memory um regarding like sporting events from your time at Penn State yeah um obviously yeah there's some football games that were insane uh like the whiteout against Ohio State in 2016 we blocked the field goal and ran it back for a touchdown um that was pretty cool um so yeah, some of my favorite memories honestly came from Penn, the Penn State Dance Marathon. I was involved in that my sophomore through senior year. Um, and it was just such a cool experience. Uh, for those who don't know, it's a 46 hour long uh, dance marathon in the Bryce Jordan Center where the basketball players play. Um, and it raises, can- it raises money for pediatric cancer at Penn State Hershey. Um, and it was just something that was really close to me because my mom works in that clinic. Um, and we just, yeah, met so many people through that organization and, uh, I danced my senior year. So that was one of my favorite memories from Penn state and just, uh, yeah, one of the craziest things I've ever done. That might've been harder than some hockey games I've played or run tests I've run. So, yeah. So thank you so much to Jenny for joining us and good luck at the upcoming Belgium, London, European, uh, pro league matches. Got it. Thanks guys for having me. I appreciate it. All right. That was so much fun. I think we genuinely laughed more than we normally do. Honestly. Um, <laughs> but you know, Jenny is just literally so funny. Like that was just so much fun. Um, and I learned a decent amount about sourdough. So maybe um maybe I'll have to try some next week. Yeah, definitely. I'm intrigued now. I think gotta give it a whirl. <laughs> All right, we'll be posting um our sourdough on the field hockey analyst Instagram. <laughs> coming to an instagram account near you so in transfer portal news avery donahue from harvard is going to be taking her fifth year at unc but she what's it called? she's been a pretty consistent starter um starting almost every game this season but uh she's been a pretty consistent starter at harvard so i think she'll um get a decent amount of playing time at unc and hopefully um she's a midi so you know, hopefully she's able to connect with Riley Heck on forward. Yeah, and I feel like North Carolina has had 
their best success when they're deep at the midi position. So it never hurts to have another midi on the roster. She does have some offensive um, upside. So yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see how she can um, fit into their game plan. So this weekend, <laughs> we're both going to be working events. I'll be at the lineup in Florham Park um, doing media for the company. I work for lineup. Um, but if you come, if you see me, come say hi, I'll have friendship bracelets and you will be, um, asked very nicely to be in a Instagram reel for the lineup Instagram. So make sure to come see me. There's a couple of 2027s who I'm really excited to see. So yeah. And then you're going to be at the senior cup this weekend. Yeah. I'll be covering the senior cup this weekend for my blog, which is taking place at Lower Dolphin Middle School in Hummelstown. Uh, PA. So I will be there with my magenta backpack. So if you see me wandering around with the camera, definitely come say hi and going to be getting some footage um, for the blog and for uh, field hockey analyst Instagram. And there's a lot of exciting players that I'm looking forward to seeing. Some of them I'm already kind of familiar with um, just from covering um, high school field hockey this past um, fall. So I'm excited to see some girls from Palmyra. Um, Liv Gain, Addison Chali, and Keely Bowers are really impressive. Um, Vic Cutts and Caitlin Strauser both come from Lower Dolphin. Um, I've never seen Lily Dewan play. She is from, I'm going to botch this, Methicton. <laughs> But, I have she no is clue. A, but she is a St. Joe's commit. So, and I did see St. Joe's play for the first time last fall. So I'm excited to see her. Um, Brenna Campania is a Wake Forest commit and she plays at Mannheim Township. And I saw her win the district championship um, over Lower Dolphin. Um, Kylie Hostler, I saw a couple times play this fall. She plays for Mannheim Central and will be going to Long Island University. And she was an impressive player in the midfield. Um, really good stick skills, IQ. Um, have to give out to, a shout out to Audrey Miller from Wilson because she will be going to Towson. So a little yay to my alma mater. And then Morgan Snyder, um, she was a really instrumental part in Bully going for the three-peat and um, sweeping the county championship, district champ, and state champ. Um, she will be playing um, at Penn State this coming fall, and she is a, an impressive player. So a lot of good talent is going to be on display, and I'm really excited to see how this event kind of all plays out. Yeah, and just a little bit of a note about LIU, because they're an NEC team, and we stan NEC teams on this uh <laughs> Web series. I still don't know what we're calling this, but um, LIU got a new head coach last year, Mike pa Pallister, and he used to be the assistant coach over at um, Syracuse. So that team is one that they do play on field turf. They don't have water turf, um, but that's one of the teams that they didn't do that great in the NEC this year. I want to say they didn't qualify for the tournament. However, they are someone who I like. Think you sh like they should be someone who. Sh they are a team that like people should be uh watching like relatively consistently. They're you know probably mid to low tier team realistically when it comes to rankings, but they always have a couple of good kids on their program. And I will say they do wind up having a lot of kids who are like insanely good transfer out, and then you'll see them on other teams. And the player that comes to mind when I say that is Sol S. -S but Espona, I'm probably butchering that. She was a grad student this year at um, LaSalle, and she's from Argentina. She's just been a really great player um, at LaSalle. She was really great while she was at LIU. She was just very impressive to watch. Um, she started all but, I think, three games this past season, so she's made a pretty good impact over there. So, you know, I'm going to advocate for the NEC teams. I'm sorry, but... um. <laughs> There is some really good, talented players in the NEC, and especially when they do transfer out, no offense, um, to the NEC teams, but then when they do transfer out, um, you do get some really powerhouse players. And then also, I mean, look at Fairfield. Fairfield's roster, um, we talked about Peyton with Jenny. Peyton's, like, one of my favorite goalkeepers. She's just a sweetheart, but, um, like, Fairfield's also just, like, a powerhouse team. So don't don't discredit my NEC kids. Um, that was an off-topic tangent, but what else is the post-show? 
But this year we are at NAC Stand Podcast along with uh, pro Beth Yeager drag flicks. Yep. <laughs> what else can we add to the list? <laughs> well, to add to that list, we are very pro Riley Heck playing indoor. She or The U.S. team is playing at the Indoor Pan Americans right now, and they won 7-1 to one yesterday on March 19th, Tuesday, against Argentina. Riley Heck scored a hat trick. Riley Heck is one of those players who, in the big game, in outdoor, is very dynamic in the circle. Most of her highlight tapes, I mean, her Sports Center top 10 highlight tape, is like little air dribbling, like popping and flipping, flicking, and she's very good in tight spaces, and she's very good at creating plays or getting on the end of a play. And I think that that skill translates so well to indoor because it's um a t- smaller field, and it's less about speed and about, you know, back passing and creating space as it is like just really good stick skills and being creative so I think her game translates so well to the indoor space um and I think that she's been really shining in this tournament so far um they've only played one game the game second game will be today after we finish recording um What's it called? Also for Team USA, I know I'm saying her name wrong because the commentator said her name and that was not how I was saying it, but I don't remember how the commentator said her name. Um, is Reese Di Diario? Di Diario? I don't know. Um, she also had a hat trick. She's a U16, uncommitted. I mean, I'm gonna say it, she's probably gonna go to UNC. However, like she that kid is just insane to watch um yeah I I mean she plays for like WC Eagles she's just like she's just so freaking talented like I don't even know how else to describe her like yeah no there that's that's how I kind of feel uh watching her um I like what you said about like Riley Heck I think like you're kind of seeing with this indoor like how versatile Riley Heck is um with her play, you know, uh, Riley Heck is just showing how versatile she is a player. And I think it will really um, even help her um, in the out translate to the outdoor game. Risa de Ario um, is a very impressive player. I It will be really interesting to see what kind of watch her path, you know, where she kind of decides to go um, and everything. But she is a very impressive on the indoor, indoor team. Yeah. And speaking of the indoor team, we absolutely have to mention USA Field Hockey's star player is back. Erin Matson makes her return to field hockey on the indoor circuit. Um, she's competing in the series. She didn't score in yesterday's game. Um, she, she started, played a I think she played a decent amount of minutes. I watched the game. Honestly, the film is not good, and watch hockey is watch hockey, so it cuts out every 30 seconds. So she probably played more than I actually saw. Um, but you know, watch hockey is watch hockey. Um what you think that there, unfortunately. Like there's just nothing else you can say about it. You pay $20 no. for a tournament pass and the tournament film is horrendous. So yeah, I mean, she's back. Um, I'm excited to see how she plays. Um, I mean, from what I did see, she looked pretty good, um, did a couple of like good stick skills, dodged some good de- defenders. So it's exciting to see her back and playing. Yeah, definitely gives them a boost, you know, never a bad day when you can get Aaron Matson on your team. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how um, that kind of all progresses through the tournament. Yeah, and I think also like on the coverage standpoint, like there is something to be said about uh, Matson and her I don't want to say her chokehold on the media because that sounds mean. Um, but Matson was a very popular story during the NCAA tournament. A lot of people who don't know anything about field hockey do know who Matson is, um, much like Kylie Kelsey. So I think that her being in this tournament does put a little bit more of a light on the tournament and maybe we'll get a couple more people watching it or at least caring about the tournament than they would otherwise. Um Yeah, definitely. Our men's team won five to three against Guyana, um, with I'm gonna butcher his name. I am so sorry, buddy. Um, a- AJ Dewey, I think that I can't tell if I have an L or an I. I think it's an L. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm blind. Um, with AJ DeWall, um, who is the Rutgers assistant coach. He was the Rutgers assistant coach, then he left, but I think he just recently got announced back. He had a hat trick. Um, I what's it called? I've only heard very positive things about him. I live like 20 minutes away from Rutgers, so I'm very connected with people who attend Rutgers, and I've heard many positive things about him as a person. Um, and he's also just a stellar player, so he's fun to watch. Um, Canada tied with Uruguay, um, four to four. Canada's all of Canada's goals were scored by one person. Her name's Allison Lee. She did not play NCAA field hockey, which is yeah. so upsetting for this podcast, but she did play for U yes. Toronto. Um, so you know, they have some college field hockey up in Canada. It's not on CAA, but you know, it still exists. It's still college hockey. It's still growing the sport. So we, we stand, we are, you know, adding to that, that to the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to have to put on a running list every episode. Um, and then literally seconds before we started recording, Argentina beat Uruguay in an eight to one match. Wow. Which, listen, I know indoor is high scoring, but 8-1 to one just seems unnatural to me. Um, I thought Argentina going into this was going to be our biggest competition, just because on the outdoor circuit they tend to be. Um, yeah, so no. knowing that, you know, we already beat them, and we did beat them 7-1. to one. We had a very good win. Um, so knowing that we already beat them, uh, knowing that we were first in the rankings prior to this, I think that um, we have a really good chance of winning this tournament. Probably by the time this gets posted, it will be over or it will be like one game left. But um, obviously the results will be over on the field hockey analyst. So we'll let you know what actually happens. Getting into spring games, what game do you want to watch this weekend? So East Stroudsburg is going to be holding a t uh, spring tournament um, hosting Mansfield and Kutztown. And Kutztown is the reigning uh, D2 national champ and they defeated ESU in the national championship game so that should be exciting and then ESU will be hosting alumni game afterwards so if you are an ESU alum that is cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I I'm a big Kutztown fan um one of my uh one of my cheerleading coaches when I was like six went to Kutztown so they have a special place in my heart um my dad actually works at Kutztown okay <laughs> so, so we're pro Kutztown pod um that's another thing. And I actually saw, I went to their game before, uh, the game to go to the final four. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're very pro yeah. Kutztown oh, yes. on the pod. But yeah, so I'm excited to see them. And then my game of the week is a D1 matchup. Liberty is playing UVA. Ooh. Now, this do, these two teams have seen each other a decent bit in recent history, but not much prior. I think like their first game was like 2017, 2018. Don't quote me on that. I looked at the history for like 20 seconds this morning. Um, but it's gonna be played Sunday at noon. Um and it's at Liberty they're hosting. So both teams beat UNC this past fall. Oh that's which, true, yes. I mean, yes, UVA did eventually lose to them later on, but knowing that both teams beat UNC, I think that's an interesting matchup. They did play each other this season, but it was literally the Tuesday of opening weekend. Like, it was, like, August 29th or something. Right. I felt like they played really early, and it wasn't, like, kind of, not that it wasn't reflective, but I just was like, wow, that's really early to be played that top of. Yeah, it was, like, I think it was, like, a Tuesday game, which is also yeah. just so weird. Um, And Liberty won 3-1, to one. but what I'm really interested in seeing is I think Liberty... I need to see their roster. Do we know if Bethany Dykema is a senior or grad year? She's fifth year, so fifth she year, won't. Okay. So I, she I, won't. Got it. Okay. Um, like her and is it? Well, is it Maddie Hostler? Jody Conley. Uh, yeah, it's not looting. Jody is a grad. Um, Lexi is a. Senior. Reagan Underwood will be there. Milagros is a grad. Yeah, yes, they had a lot of grads. Okay, so the that'll be interesting because they're gonna be like probably trying to play new and the goalie. Will she be back? I don't know. If, um, I want to say her name's Azul. I don't know if Azul's announced a fifth year at this point. That's what I was gonna say. I didn't hear. I didn't see anything, and I didn't like. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if she's announced a fifth year, but I think that knowing um, 
knowing that Liberty is so heavy on seniors and also just knowing um, some of the incoming freshmen they had, or they're not incoming freshmen anymore, they're incoming sophomores. Um, knowing that like UVA had Mil uh, Mia Bello in, uh, in back um, and then knowing that UVA had, um, you know, freshmen like uh, Mia Bello, you got Minnie Pollock, who, Pollock, Pollock, Pollock. Um, Pollock. who's going to be a junior in the fall, uh, Daniela mendez Chandler, who will be a senior in the fall. They have, like, the, I think they're returning a lot of their key players, where a lot of Liberty's key players were fifth years or are seniors who were not quite sure if they're going to return yet. They do have some really impressive um, freshmen. But I think it's going to be interesting to kind of see, you know, the changing of the guards, who's like who the new kids are and how they're doing. Um, yeah. So I think that's going to be. Yeah. Especially with Liberty, because like that kind of core people, core group of people is kind of who helped them. Um, they were instrumental in the na going to the national championship. So you're going to see a lot of those players kind of either they're left or they're going to be leaving so kind of see how yeah. you know they adjust with um players who may still have a little bit of the experience compared with you know getting every like new players like um engaged in the system and stuff like that so I think that's a good spring matchup to kind of really test where um you are against a team who probably has a lot of returners yeah I'm excited to see that match I, or I mean I'm not going to be watching it but you know for that match to happen um yes maybe it's we good, should it's a good spring match <laughs> coaches can we get like a live streaming deal that we live stream spring matches on youtube for free please yes please that would be <laughs> can, we, can we please do that Very please i don't want to pay for seven more subscriptions I'm no soccer. the big 10 i watch big soccer just, i already have 10 subscriptions the big 10 just changed my subscription they just got rid of the field hockey pass and they are going to uh give me a conference pass for $120. No, I don't I, I don't pay for Big Ten. That's the only one I refuse to pay for. So I will uh sorry, we'll be canceling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we not standing Big Ten in this pod. No. <laughs> um <laughs> but all we need a field hockey streaming platform where we can pay yeah. and just watch all the games and on slow sports. For the no. love of God, please stop using Flow Flo Sports. Flow Sports is I'm not stand on this podcast. Flow Sports is terrible. As someone who went from cheerleading, where Flow Sports is the only thing you can use, please stop using Flow Sports. Keep it on ESPN Plus. ESPN please. Plus is fine. It's like what six dollars a month. Yes, it is. It is accessible to us. Please, please. <laughs> we are broke. Half your fans are college students please <laughs> or someone sponsor us so we don't have to pay for memberships in the fall true that would be just as fun <laughs> that'd be fun i'm just saying just saying put it out there and then the last thing we're going to talk about on this week's episode is the teammate of the year award that i recently announced on my instagram nominations are going to be closing soon i don't have a date yet but i need to have a date because we have over 50 nominations um but basically if you have a teammate a friend a coach a manager, an athletic trainer, honestly, anyone related to field hockey who you really feel is an impactful person on the field. Um, we want you to nominate them for this award. Me and Jill will be will be going through the review. Uh, me and Jill will be going through the responses and review them. Um, my plan was to post as many as physically possible. I don't think we're gonna get to all fifty, unfortunately. Um, but when I tell you that reading these reviews are they're not reviews of people. That's so mean to say. These nominations. Um That's Reading these nominations, literally a couple of them made me cry because they were so sweet. Um, as someone who um didn't play, um, it, like I understand how impactful, you know, a bench player could be. And then I won a stupid award for most outstanding cheerleader when I was eight years old. <laughs> um, and that medal, I I don't have it anymore, shockingly, but that medal hung in my room for when I tell you, like twelve years. I know exactly where it is you know it's in a box in storage at this point but like something as little as you know a little trophy um meant so much to me and so like so much to my career as a cheerleader that you know got ended very quickly um however it's so important to recognize the people who may not always be getting recognition so that's what this award's about and we really encourage you to nominate anyone who you feel is fit for this award um 
thank you so much for watching this week's episode next week we don't know who this guest is going to be next week just yet but we'll be announcing it soon stay tuned and find out (laughs) stay tuned um (laughs) thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed our endless rant and make some sourdough this weekend